All right, and with us right now, we've got James Mulvaney, who is in Manchester, England right now. Uh, and James, you are the founder of podcast.co, radio.co, and your latest business, matchmaker.fm. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much for having me, Josh. It's a, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. I always enjoy these conversations, so I uh, can't wait to see what you've got in store. Favorite music artist from Manchester? Oh, you know, there's so many good ones. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm into like dance music, like yeah. house music from like the mid noughties. And there's a duo called Herd and Fitz. Uh, no one will have heard of them, but I, they had some great tunes out. And, and of course, the obvious ones, you know, people like Oasis, everybody knows. Of course, there's so much yeah. music that comes from, from Manchester. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, uh, so have you born and raised there or did you move there at some point? No, I moved here. Um, I actually grew up near London, so I'm, I'm mm -hmm. Southern. I don't have a Manchester accent. Um, and I've been in Manchester now since 2010. So I moved here just after I graduated. I went to university in a town not too far away from here. Um, and, and Manchester seemed a great place to set up shop in terms of, you know, I, I kind of validated my business idea while I was at university, mm -hmm. uh, got it to a level where I didn't need to go out and find a job after I graduated. And, you know, Manchester was, it, it's changed so much in the past 10 years, but actually, you know, it seemed a good alternative to London in terms of, um, setting up a business, um, you know, premises, staff costs, all that stuff was a lot less than the overheads that I would have if I was to base in London. Um, and it wasn't too far from, from where I went to university. So it seemed like a great place to be. So I've been here ever since. And what was this first business that you launched uh, that, that you'd proven out in college? So it was called Wave Streaming, and um, we actually only just recently closed it down. It was still 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 hanging in there. Um, and basically, the, the way I got started was I was was always interested in radio, and and uh, I sort of looked at going into to radio as a career as a DJ. Um, decided it wasn't for me. Um, went off to university and I was doing interactive multimedia, which is sort of like a posh term for web design. And I kind of learned how to code, learned how to build websites, put the two and two get together and wave streaming was born. And that was basically selling services, services to, to radio stations, streaming media services uh, and app development and that kind of thing. Wow. You know, I, uh, you and I have similar paths. So I, when I was in school, my ambition. So I was in the US Navy. I was a journalist. So I did radio my last year. And when I was in Hawaii, I actually uh, did overnight at an AM radio station, oh, wow. you know, just to get experience. And, um, and so my big dream was to become a love doctor on the radio. And really? uh, then I got distracted with internet development. And, you know, I think I those dude, I, to rest. <laughs> what I think it gives you is, um, a billion a great ability to communicate you know i think that's the thing you know if you go off and and even if you just do it for like you say when you're at college or university and you join the student station it's just great experience talking down a microphone effectively into nothing yeah you know you have to think on your feet and it gives you a good way of a, a good ability to communicate and kind of get your point across really so i think that's really valuable in business and when you start going into like everyone now has it was in front of the microphone in front of cameras and you have to do it if you're running an online business so it's, it's tremendously important to get those skills explain the age. evolution then to radio.co <clears throat> yeah so we've been we, we were running wave streaming it became pretty successful um you know i grew it to sort of six figure turnover business by the time i was about 23 24 years old wow was really happy with that you know um but we had what part of the success was we, we managed to forge a deal with a company uh, a small company called AOL uh, that owned this this bit of software and, and called Shoutcast and that was kind of the core of our system at the time mm -hmm. um, then as quick as that deal came around they were referring us leads constantly like so we were getting probably 20 customers a day from them signing up uh, they then decided to sell that business so that deal went away and at that time you know I was kind of freaking out thinking oh my god I've got this business so at that stage I maybe had like 10 staff who were working for me you know we were probably turning over you know just north of half a million and I was thinking everything I've got to, everything I've worked for is going to go away um, so I, I sort of had to kind of think of an, a solution I thought right okay what is next there's no point of continuing to sell this service because these new, these new owners of this product aren't interested in working with us. So how can we do better? How can we make something that's, you know, an, a natural evolution of what we were selling before, but, but 10 times better. So we, that was how radio.co really came about. Wow. We just took on board all of the customer feedback, 
And initially we were selling services to what you'd imagine is tradition, like a radio station, but really then it became more entrepreneurs, brands, musicians, DJs, all sorts of people who were wanting to leverage the broadcasting power uh, to, to, to sort of grow their brand, um, but didn't really understand traditionally, you know, how to stream media and all this sort of stuff. So that's what we, why we decided to create radio.co make it super simple for anyone to get on air easily and broadcast from anywhere and to anywhere. That's amazing. So now when somebody starts, a, somebody wants to start a streaming radio station on radio.co, um, obviously they, they as well, they need to take care of their licensing separately. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, so the advantage then is assume now is this main, do you mainly have a lot of terrestrial broadcasters or do you just see a lot of people that say, no, we see some great advantage to having our own stream? I think, um, it's a real variety. You know, we have a lot of traditional sort of what you'd imagine as a radio station. We also have a lot of, uh, entrepreneurs doing really interesting things, radio stations for sort of either hyper local markets or um, hyper sort of niche genres of music um, and you know everything you can imagine so we 've recently had you know we have bra had brand campaigns um, charities use us for broadcasting mm -hmm. lots of channels in different languages so uh, the global goals campaign, which was a few years back, was one of the first big clients we had when we were actually testing the software out and it was a great use case scenario because they broadcast I think it was something crazy like 300 million people tune in in all different countries around the world and they were sending streams out in like I think it was six different languages so it was a great validation of the platform um, and you know we've had more recently whiskers cat food were using our product to power a cat radio station uh, so it's kind of not just what you'd imagine is traditional like broadcast radio um, obviously lots of stuff like talk shows newscasts uh, religious broadcasts all sorts of things nice nice okay and then uh, obviously it, you know as you're operating radio.co you're watching the podcasting space and Absolutely. so then what so podcast.co was a sort of natural evolution from radio.co. Initially, we looked at building the podcasting functionality into the existing platform, but it made more sense to uh, roll it out as a separate business just because I think the podcasting space is very exciting, you know, as you'll know, and as I think a lot of your audience will be aware, uh, you know, there's tons of opportunity in podcasting right now. It's a really good tool if you want to grow a business. It's a great tool if you're, you know, if you're creative and you've got an idea or a story you want to tell, it's a perfect platform to do it. And the good thing about podcasting, I think, is, you know, anyone could do it. The cost to entry is so low, you know, you don't really need to go out and spend a fortune on, uh, you know, a lot of equipment or anything like that. Uh, you know, go out and invest in a good quality microphone. Um, but then, you know, the world is your oyster, really. Yeah, it, it really is so much easier today. And the tools, the platforms, uh, you have a lot of options. So yeah. what separates podcast.co from, say, another podcasting platform? I mean, the, the goal really was to make a product that was really straightforward and simple to use. This is a success we've had with the radio.co platform. Um, so we really drew on our experience to make a product that's super slick clean easy to use and um, we've added some various features to it so like automatic transcription um you know a video video asset creation so that again it's really easy to market your podcast and get the word out there and you know we've we thought more recently what else can we do to help our existing customer base plus also you know at like another funnel and which is how matchmakers come along and matchmakers a platform to basically connect podcasters with podcast guests yeah, talk about that a little bit more. Why is that a big deal? And then I'll, I'll definitely chime in on this. <laughs> so I, I'm sure you know, you're, you'll know you be fully aware, Josh. I think that, I can't remember the exact statistic, but I think it's something like 63% of podcasts are based on interviewing guests, right? So mm. a huge chunk of podcasts are interviewing guests, but there doesn't seem to be a sort of solid and reliable platform out there uh, to connect people together. And if you want to find good guests, you can spend a lot of time doing it Quite often, the guest you have won't always know how to set everything up. And again, you know, if, if you're reaching out to people on LinkedIn, for example, that's great. There's, it's easy to find people who are experts in different fields on LinkedIn. But then how do you know that they've, they've number one, been interviewed on 
the podcast before. Number two, they've got the right equipment. You know, I noticed in your onboarding email, that was one of the things you mentioned, and I think that's quite common. Um, so, you know, what, what we want to do with this platform is ba- basically allow people to filter, you know, vast amounts of people based on criteria. So, for example, what sort of uh, areas of, of expertise they have. Um, but also, they look at things like, do they have a good internet connection? Do they already own a decent microphone? So, immediately when you contact that guest, you can then perhaps preview uh, interviews they've done before so you know what they sound good and they know exactly what they're doing and therefore they'll make it a good candidate for your show because I think gone are the days where podcasts are just you know two guys down the pub speaking you know crap to each other I think you need to have good quality these days you need to be pushing out content that people are really engaged with and really want to listen to and and quality is a big part of that yeah. Now talk about it from the perspective of a guest. So let's say if I'm an author, speaker, coach, I'm the founder yeah. of a company, uh, why do you recommend uh, that a guest really take a good look at getting on podcasts? Yeah, great question. I think podcasts are one of the new forms of media. If you look at sort of YouTube, Instagram are the new TV, podcasts are the new radio and they're becoming the new radio very, very quickly in terms of they've hit the mainstream. I think five years ago, you went up to someone in the street and said, what's a podcast? You might get you know, a third of people who say, yeah, I know what podcasting is. Nowadays, you go up to, the street, on, up to someone on the street, say, what's a podcast? Pretty much everyone you speak to is going to know exactly what you're talking about. So if you're a, an entrepreneur or a public speaker or a coach, or someone who's looking to promote themselves, promote a product, whatever. Um, You know, podcasting is such an easy way of doing it. As I mentioned before, you don't need to spend a lot of money doing it. It's free advertising effectively. And all you're doing is having an interesting conversation, just like, you know, you and I are doing right now. Um, You know, and and once you've done a few, you kind of get the hang of it and it becomes easier and easier the more you do. But, you know, there's other benefits as well, like backlinks to your website, um, you know, just general connections. I think the more podcasts you feature on, the more connections you build, you know, it's great as a business development tool. Um, I think there's just a multitude of benefits. And also, you know, it's just it's just really spreading, spreading your words um, to a to a bigger audience that perhaps you wouldn't have had access to before. Yeah, you know, it's it really the the podcast from a business owner perspective, mm-hmm. and I'm talking about you know should I start a podcast? Well, the reality is is it really doesn't take that many resources today. Um, you can actually do something as simple as just make it a part of your regular networking. And so use the podcast to reach out to the people that you want to network with. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead and and do a solid for them first and kind of take a page out of the Bob Berg Go-Giver book and and just give value to them first and see what happens to the relationship. And another thing too is that you might also consider beyond just networking, what would happen Hmm. if you actually started interviewing guests that could be potentially your customers and your clients and use the platform to again do them a solid first what does it cost you it's very minimal but yet it allows you to get straight to the head of line get straight into the c-suite and and interview or or, you know build a relationship with whoever you want so i think that's that's the main thing isn't it like once you've had a conversation with someone for half an hour about them and their expertise it's building rapport you can't get that in a normal sales scenario when you're right. picking up the phone and trying to sort of sell something. But once you've had that conversation with them, they're more likely to speak to you again. Um, it's a fantastic business development tool. And, and it's just, you know, the other thing from it, by interviewing guests or by being interviewed on an interesting podcast, you learn a lot of stuff. Like you get to speak to some really interesting people. And I think it's just great for personal development as well. So, um, so again, um, the podcast.co platform Mm. uh what is your i i want to go back to that one more time um just for people that might be discovering this podcast episode and they're like well i want to learn a little bit more about the future of podcast.co um i I just want to make sure you know it sounds like the major advantage to it is it's a very simple easy to use ui Mm -hmm. um compared to perhaps some other solutions in the marketplace. Yeah, Um, we also handle the distribution as well. So you don't need to worry about what an RSS feed is. We'll take care of all of that for you. So we'll push out to all the major channels, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
is iHeart, I didn't see iHeart listed yet. Yeah, so we, we do we do push to iHeart. Uh, it is compatible okay. with iHeart. Um, I think their approval process isn't as kind of predictable as we'd like. Right. Uh, so I think we had it on the, the list of, of the approval of the uh, partners at one stage, but we maybe had taken it off just because we were finding like we were submitting clients they weren't getting approved, some were, some weren't. So we only really want to kind of guarantee results where we know that we can get reliable results. But there's nothing to stop you submitting to iHeart. My podcast on iHeart, I'm sure yours right. is, they do yeah. accept um, podcasts. But I think maybe they're just a bit picky about who they're accepting, etc. Oh, okay. Um, so what if someone's already hosting with another provider? How easy is it for them to migrate to podcast.com? Super simple. You just give us your existing uh, RSS feed link and our system takes care of everything. So it will literally pull in all of your existing episodes. It'll pull in your artwork, all of your descriptions, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and present it to you on our interface just as you would have seen it on your previous providers. So wow. simple to migrate across. And, and, and pricing, uh, where, where do you aim to be in terms of pricing compared to other platforms, hosting platforms? So we are aiming really to, uh, we're sort of, we're actually in the process of changing the pricing at the moment. So I, I don't want to sort of quote anything. I do, sure. <laughs> just due to change. But basically where, where we're heading is to businesses with multiple podcasts. Mm -hmm. And we're really focusing on, you know, uh, our agency clients rather than just someone with a single podcast. We're still going to obviously accept everyone, um, but we're, we're sort of changing our pricing at the moment to make it more friendly to people with multiple podcasts. And and just in case we didn't hit this hard enough, um, Matchmaker.fm is mm -hmm. a platform that connects guests and hosts. Absolutely. And what's the future for that? So as I mentioned, I, the, the third, we've got a big job ahead of us because we're obviously in the process of populating the platform. It's completely free to sign up and completely free to use. There's no limits on usage currently, uh, both for guests and podcasters. Um, we are using AI to try and connect people more intelligently. So we're looking at, as we progress, at developing more and more tools. So you can log in, you, you know, using things like uh, your show description, etc. It will naturally start making more intelligent recommendations. Um, you know, also we're we, we're using it. We want to create a really kind of almost like a social network for podcasters. So you have an, a, a great profile. You can show your you know you can show off your the guests, the interviews that you've just done, or if you're a podcaster, you can show off the shows that you're involved in, and you know just make it a, a really productive place to quickly book high quality guests, or if you're a guest looking to get booked on podcasts, find some really awesome podcasts to be featured on that already have momentum and traction and uh, are gonna be showing you off in the best light in terms of you know if you're a business owner or if you're just taking a product to market, you know, find some really relevant podcasts to, to quickly get on, on board with. Um, and just really break down the barriers, the hassle of communicating. You know, again, one of the, Sort of one of the one of the things I, I'd like to do with a platform is just try and make it more unified. So currently, you know, you'll you'll have done this yourself. A lot of people use third party services to book calendars, uh, you know, um, tools to to actually conduct interviews. So really, further down the line, I'd like to try and build all of this under one platform. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's it. the well, ultimate goal. Well, James Mulvaney, you are the founder of Radio.co podcast.co and now matchmaker.fm and you're also a podcaster of course you've got your podcast is create reach inspire oh, i'm actually branded up today as you can see uh yeah <laughs> i am most days to be honest uh but yeah um create reach inspire we've actually just started the second season um where i'm speaking to some really interesting guests the first one was around finance the second episode is about uh the music industry mm. so having some really interesting conversations over on there as well. So it's, it's, it's great fun. It's a fantastic place to be, in, be at the moment from my perspective as an entrepreneur. James, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Josh. It's been, a, been an honor and a pleasure. <laughs>